Welcome to class number seven of our Cooking Connection virtual cooking classes. I am Charlotte Samuel and I'm so glad that you guys have chosen to join me today for our fish cooking class. Um, we are still in January, so we are still right in the middle of resolution, resolution solutions. And I hope everybody out there is keeping to their New Year's resolutions. Scott Tompkins, are you keeping with yours? You bet I didn't. All right. Oh, oh. well, um, uh, part of this class is helping people keep on track. So we are going to talk about um, the health benefits of cooking fish and make fish, you know what, take the mystery out of cooking fish, That's right. if you Make will. That's right, it easy. And to help with that conversation, we have invited um, one of our HEB dietitians, Lorena Kaplan, to talk to us a little bit about um, nutrition services at HEB, but also about something called food synergy. And so I'm not even trying to explain it. I'm going to invite Lorena to come up here and talk to you guys directly about it. Please welcome Lorena. Come on, Lorena, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Chef Charlotte. I'm so excited to be here. Like Chef Charlotte mentioned, my name is Lorena Kaplan. I'm one of our HEB dietitians, and I get the pleasure of working with an amazing team of dietitians and nutrition services. If you haven't heard yet, HEB offers help when it comes to nutrition education. Our team of dietitians is really great in helping you understand what works for you, what works for your busy lifestyle, what are the foods that your family are eating right now, how do we take those and make sure that they're all balanced so you're receiving what you need for good nutrition. So it's really so much fun when it comes to cooking and talking about food for a dietitian. We love talking about food um, and we love talking about food that's available at our HEB that is so simple to use. Now you're going to learn a lot today from Chef Charlotte. Our focus is going to be on really how do we cook this fish, how do we make it taste delicious and then my focus will be more of how do we really combine foods together and like Chef Charlotte said, how do we create food synergy so that our bodies are getting what it needs. Now what is food synergy? You know, there's lots of recommendations on how you should be pairing your foods, but it really is simple when you think about it. Food synergy basically takes a look at what types of foods you should be combining so that you can get the best bang for your buck and make sure the body is absorbing those nutrients. So we'll speak to that a couple of times throughout our presentation today. I encourage you to send in some questions. I'd love to be able to answer any nutrition questions that you have, especially when it comes to maybe you're curious about what does a dietitian really do? Um, and know that we are here to help you when it comes to meal planning as well. Meal planning is a big focus for us this year, and so you're going to learn so much from, from Chef Charlotte today, and we want to continue the conversation after today's class so that you can make sure and get what you need, get your family needs when it comes to meal planning. So I'll turn it back over to Chef Charlotte. Don't be afraid to ask questions. I can't wait to, to see what comes out of this wonderful recipes that Chef Charlotte's making. Thank you so much, Lorena. And again, Lorena will be here for the duration of the class. You can ask all of the questions in the chat. Um, she can answer them directly live or she could type the answers out. Um, and of course, we have Chef Scott Tompkins here. And so if you have any questions that revolve around cooking or whatever, hit Scott up in the chat and he'll be glad to answer those questions or comments. Um, so let's get started. So the three recipes that we are going to do today, we are going to do a wonderful, crispy, crunchy baked cod with a crispy cracker crust, which is a total throwback to like the East Coast, like broiled, butter laden, baked scrod thing. And then it's not a thing. It's actually really I good. love the scrod. I love right? the, the right? it's such an East Coast. <laughs> Such an East Coast egg. We're going to do a salt and pepper um, seared salmon. So we're going to do a baked dish and then we're going to do a pan seared dish. And then to sort of tie everything together, um, we're going to do a beautiful vinaigrette and we're going to just give you the basics of how to make a vi uh, vinaigrette at home, which I feel is like a really good tool to keep in your arsenal. So we're going to get started. Um, we're going to start with our cod. And right here I have some beautiful cod loin. And I got this fresh in the fish market. Um, you can use frozen fish or you can use fresh. Um, just a note that if you're going to use fresh fish, try to buy it um, within 48 hours of when you're going to cook it. So I bought this today, so it's super fresh. Um, a note on fresh fish, um, fish should never be overly offensively fishy, right? The smell um, of fish should smell like the ocean. It should have like a light like fish smell, but it should never be offensive. So just so that you know like when you're picking out good fish. Okay, and I believe that like, 
you know, fresh fish versus frozen fish, like whatever works with your budget. So if you're doing like meal planning, um, excuse me, then maybe frozen fish might work out better. And if I'm not mistaken, there's no nutritional difference, right? That's right, Chef Charlotte. There's not going to be a difference between the nutrition profile in a frozen fish or a fresh fish. It really does come down to the meal planning. You know, my decision to buy fresh really comes down to, am I going to be cooking in the next 48 hours, like you mentioned? Or perhaps this may be a weekend meal for me for next okay. weekend, and then I'll purchase something frozen. But don't, don't feel like you are, you're going to compromise any of the nutrition by choosing something frozen. Okay. So, um, to I love start, what you, I love what you said about fresh fish. I think it's a great tip for those people that are that are looking to either. A lot of people can be intimidated of cooking fish. I think a lot of people yeah. are also kind of like, what's the best time to use it? It won't last quite as long as chicken or beef will normally yeah. in the fridge. So usually, just like Charlotte said, if you're gonna plan on doing fish, always do it. I usually buy the fish the same day or just do it the next day, so that way you're getting the absolute Absolutely. freshest quality possible. So to make the crispy, crunchy like crust for this cod. We're gonna do some Ritz crackers or Itza crackers, and we're gonna make this really good cracker crumb. We're gonna use some Parmesan cheese. It's gonna give us a good umami, a little bit of parsley, and some butter. Now, typically when you have that baked scrot, it is like so covered in butter, and we have sort of lightened this up a little bit by um, adding some olive oil into the mix instead of just butter. So the butter is just really our flavoring agent, and then, Instead of pulling out like a whole like huge like Cuisinart, yeah, get I'm your aggression gonna take, out, girl. I'm gonna do the Texas tough, and I'm just right. gonna roll this guy out. You could get the kids involved with this one. And the great thing is, like doing it this way, it, it's at the end of the day you're making this. You probably got a, maybe you've got some frustrations with the boss or oh, a coworker. Sure. You know, why yeah. puree it? You can Have a little the fun with uh, you know crushing some. Some you could get some kids involved. Speaking of kids, I love this recipe because. Um, it has that buttery, crispy crunchiness, right, um, from the, the crumb, but also cod is like a really like mild flavored fish. So it's a good like, if you're afraid of fish or think you don't like fish. Charlotte, we have a question, it's a great question. Okay. What do you do about, what can you do to help the fishy smell? Is there like lemon juice you can put on? Like, is there any kind of like trick you can do when fish smells overly fishy? I have my opinion on it, but <laughs> so, what do you, what um, do you, what, what so could you what do So what I do with fish is I, I rarely keep it in the plastic um, that it comes in. I always take it out of the, um, of the, the plastic that it's in and I typically wrap it in a paper towel or, um, and I keep it as dry as possible and as cold as possible. Yeah, I like that. I typically, if there's ever an off smell with any of your, I mean, sometimes it happens if you get chicken that comes in the crab back bag or beef comes in yeah. the crab back bag. Sometimes there's a little bit of a smell when it comes out, which is usually okay. But for fish, eh, you got to kind of, it's usually the fresher the better. So if it has a, if a smell to it, you know, and it'd be weird to walk up to the fish market and go, can I smell the cod? <laughs> but, you know. You I mean, could. absolutely you they could. They probably would. You They'd absolutely you could. But I know that our fish market does a really good job. So, okay, here's our cracker crumb. I'm going to add in some of this butter. I'm gonna add in some of our Parmesan cheese. They're asking what good? you added to the top of your fish. Just salt and pepper, Salt chef? and pepper, just all I have in there right now is salt and pepper. Just salt and pepper. And then to this, I'm gonna add in some olive oil to sort of help, help our- Bind it. Bind it and help our, our cracker crumb. Now typically in this recipe, it would all be butter. Okay. So you're adding another really great fat. Can I speak a little bit to the please. nutrition profile in fish and seafood in general, Chef yes, uh, Charlotte? Please, please, please. So I want to mention, and I feel like our, our consumers, our customers are really understanding that, okay, fish is going to be a source of omega-3 fatty acid. If you don't know that, you will now, right? Fish is a is going to be an excellent source of omega-3 fatty acids. And so all fish have omega-3s? All fish are going to have uh, omega-3 fatty acids. The higher quantities are going to be found in your fatty fish, so um, fish like salmon. Um, and these are going to be really important that you're receiving them um, on a weekly basis, if not every day. Um, and so other, other really good nutrition um, aspects to pull out on seafood is going to be it also is a source of vitamin D. I want to talk a little bit more about this later because it's so important when it comes to immunity. You're also going to be getting B vitamins, selenium, potassium, iron, and I must mention protein too. Um, all of these are really great nutritional benefits from eating seafood. Oh my gosh. Did you know all that, Tompkins? Uh, I knew absolutely zero of that, so I'm glad <laughs> that you're here to talk us through all that. Um, so they're asking what weekly. you were chopping. What she chopped was uh, parsley. Parsley. Some fresh parsley. Um, I just added parsley for the color. Um, 
I like some bright, some brightness. To this, you could also do like so lemon zest would be a beautiful thing to put on top of the fish um, as well. Love and that. I would just zest that lemon right on top of um, the cod itself. I'm gonna mix this guy up. Okay. Now I gotta mention fish sticks and anything breaded goes so great in my household. I've yes. got kiddos, and so this is already turning out to be something that I know um, families love. In fact, when we can recreate something that is familiar, like fried food, right now and in our diet, we, we eat too much of that, right? Now we are um, really getting something that is enjoyable, something that you can be making. It'll be a favorite dish for forever. This is gonna be so good. I'm gonna give this a light spritz we with some oil, and I'm gonna use a little avocado oil because I have it available. But I just want to give it a light spritz of um, some oil, and it's also gonna help that stick um, on there. Stick. To yep. The... And I'm I like the spray. I feel like it helps with portion control. I don't know. We were talking earlier about people get people get nervous yeah. about eating fish when it comes to um, like levels of mercury. Yeah. And uh, you said something that blew my mind. And it was like about, will you talk a little bit about like kind of mercury and safety? Because I think some people are like, well, how much, how much fish can I eat? Can I eat salmon seven days a week? Like it's full of so many great things. Like what, like, can you talk through some of that? Like, or maybe debunk some things that people sure. may have just Absolutely. based on. Absolutely. You know, because that can be a concern for folks. But first I want to start off by saying that cod and salmon, these are going to be a low mercury uh, seafood. So um, not a lot of concern there, but okay. then there's this really great thing that Mother Nature came and brought in and included in fish, and that's selenium. Look how pretty Know this that looks. selenium acts as a, a binder to mercury, and it prevents mercury from acting. And so, um, you know, that's that built-in uh, safety net for Mother Nature, which is always a great thing. I didn't know that. That blew my mind when you told me. I, I was like, I didn't know that. What? I learned something Pick new. I didn't, I didn't everywhere. know that. Uh, <laughs> chef, can you put something other like a uh, question like, can they put cilantro on top of that instead of Absolutely. Parsley, you could do cilantro. You could do um, any kind of herb would be great. So thyme would be good. I'm going to throw this into a preheated oven. We're at 400 degrees. We're going to let this go about um, 25 minutes. Um, and also, if you are um, like gluten-free, you could do a gluten-free pretzel crust. You could do a... Um, like a nut crust, right? You could do something so you're not um, limited. This, this is really a versatile um, recipe. All right, I'm gonna do a quick little cleanup. We had a great question come through, Chef Charlotte, if you'd like to share. Please. Um, question was, how do we get additional omega-3 fatty sources? Is there anything else other than seafood that we can be getting these? Ooh, that is a really good question. So I know that like um, avocados are good and some nuts are good. Yes, so there are additional sources. Things like walnuts and avocados are also going to be a omega-3 fatty acid. Now remember earlier I alluded to really important EPA and DHA. If I didn't mention it, I should have because that is really what we're looking to be benefiting from these types of fatty acids that's particularly found in seafood. But you can find trace amounts in walnuts and avocados as well. You do still want to uh, bring in um, um, seafood as well. And if that's something that's not, not absolutely possible for you, again, you know, your dietitians are really um, going to be able to give you those ideas on how to bring in those essential fatty acids as well. Love that. So we had a question. It's a really good question. Okay. It said, could you do on the cod, talking about the cod, could you do a nut crust on that as well? And would it Absolutely. change? Would you need to change the temperature of the oven at all or do anything different? Um, that's a really good question. You might want to monitor. So like if you were going to do like an almond crust, it might, um, it might brown a little bit faster. So you could lower the temperature or you could just monitor it. Yeah. Um, so we're going to move into our um, salt and pepper. Um, seared salmon. And before we do that, I wanted to show everyone quickly how to remove the skin of the salmon. You can buy salmon any which way you choose at HEB. We have fillets that are already portioned in a meal simple tray that can just go in the oven. We have center cut salmon. We have every type of salmon. Organic salmon. <laughs> under the sun. This, um, this fillet is actually the uh, sustainably raised Atlantic salmon. Um, Atlantic salmon. Um, I just got the whole, the whole filet and really quickly. So I'm actually going to cut off the portions that we're going to use. Let me get a tray um, for our seared salmon and then show you guys quickly how to take that skin off. So Charlotte, I know you're going to show us how go. to do the skin, but if, if yeah. people are intimidated by it, they can always go to the, to ask their, their uh, fish market partner, Hey, can you take the skin off this salmon for me? And they could totally Absolutely. have that done as well. So 
Absolutely. This is a great trick to add to your arsenal. After all, we are here to, to teach you new For things sure. and learn new things, stretch you a little bit culinarily. So you should know that like as you move into, like as you get closer to the tail end, the filet of the fish will get thinner. So the cooking time is going to vary and you'll just, you'll just have to like pay attention and I'll give you some tips and tricks on that. I'm going to cut one more solid filet from that. These look really good. And this is what we're going to use to do our actual seared salmon. But now like really quickly, um, to take the skin off the salmon, or any fish for that matter, you want to make sure that like the bottom or the, the skin side of the fish is like really dry and not slippery because you want to be really, you want to make sure you have a, a firm grip on it. And you want to make sure you have a really sharp knife. You don't need a special knife. You don't need a fillet knife. You can use a really sharp chef's knife. I'm raising my hand, Charlotte, because yes, what, what doesn't it, isn't a sharp knife more dangerous than a dull knife? No, chef, Shouldn't actually. Shouldn't I use a dull knife I, what in did this I situation? Say? <laughs> Earlier I said sharp knives save lives. So um, with a dull knife, what you're doing is like when you're, when you're cooking or using that dull knife, you're going to apply more force and more pressure. And when you apply more force and more pressure, you are not necessarily paying as much attention to where that knife is going and you don't have as much control. So that's where you lose fingertips, things like that. You could slip, stab yourself. It could be a whole. That's a whole other Friday right. night you don't want to deal with. Yeah, a whole other Friday night you don't want to deal with. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my knife and I'm just gonna make a small cut into the tail end of the fish, and I'm gonna go in, I, and I'm gonna go just to the skin. You don't wanna go through. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring it back, pull it back to the edge of my cutting board, and I'm gonna let the knife do what it does best, and it's gonna cut. I'm gonna pull. So you're kinda of holding the knife still, yep. and you're more pulling the skin. And I'm pulling the skin, and I'm allowing the knife to separate the skin, from the filet, and if we turn around, um, I'm like, please, that's look, where good. A sharp please knife. look good, please look good, and look at that. So we have some really good, minimal amount of flesh on the skin, and a really beautiful skinned piece of salmon. This would be beautiful on the grill. You could leave it on the sheet pan and broil it. It's absolutely fantastic. All right, quick cleanup. And th Love this that. is where I'm loving that you brought up our seafood market. Chef Scott, can I speak a little bit about Please. commitment to sustainability? Because yes. I I'm just I'm just always so amazed by um, all of the all of the hard work that our seafood market does. But a couple of things that I want our our folks to know is that we partner with Environmental Defense Fund. This is a leading international conversation organization to maintain high sustainable sourcing standards. This is very important for us at HEB, so we want to make sure um, that we are keeping our, our folks safe. Um, and, and kudos to our, our seafood department. I, I'm so impressed with what you just did, Chef Charlotte. I, I want to go home and try it, but thank God I have my supermarket to back me up <laughs> when it doesn't come out as beautifully as yours. You may not need that much salmon all at one time. <laughs> Um, you can always leave the skin on, and you can definitely eat salmon skin. Um, it's not my favorite thing to eat, but people do love it. And it's got a very, it's, it's very fishy. Right? Okay. And higher omega threes. You're going to source right. those fatty um, acids from that skin. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Real quickly, I'm going to come back over here so y'all can see this. I forgot to do this. I'm so sorry, I want, but I want y'all to see. So what I'm going to do is, um, while my pan is heating up, I'm going to lightly spray these fillets with avocado oil. I'm using avocado oil because there's a really high smoke point. It's like 470 to 500. And what that means is that we could heat this oil super high before it starts to break down chemically and like degrade the oil. So that's a super good thing. And it also has a really mild flavor. All right. And again, I love the spray because it's portion control. I don't That's know. That's right. It makes less splashing. Right. Marina, we had a question. Go ahead. From Alyssa. It was, uh, is salmon diet friendly since it's considered a fatty fish? Ooh, good question. Oh my gosh. This might be my favorite question <laughs> of all year. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, fat really does get a bad rap. And I need to say first off is fat is essential. So I spoke about these really important nutrients that seafood holds and one of those major ones is going to be those omega-3 fatty acids. Does fat make you gain weight? Not necessarily when you're eating it from, uh, from these sources. Number two, I got to mention that this is uh, considered an unsaturated fat and, and by that I mean it, it, the way that the body utilizes is very different than the way we would utilize a saturated fat. So think um, animal fat or something fried, something that's high in, in, um, in any type of animal fat. So number one, we, we really need that fat. 
Um, number two, this is a great, excellent source. The other thing now, and this is a great time to start talking about food synergy, Chef Scott, is fat is essential for certain abs um, absorption of vitamins. So particularly, these vitamins are vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and vitamin K. Now, if we don't have fat present when we are consuming these vitamins, we will not absorb um, the, these vitamins. We wouldn't have fat with, present at the same time, we won't absorb those vitamins. Um, so it is essential to have in a, in a diet. And what I also see a lot of, um, Chef Scott, when patients come through, people who are on a low fat diet aren't as successful in maintaining uh, their good weight loss as folks that incorporate these good sources of fat. Why? Because this keeps us full. This really does help us to maintain a good intake throughout the day. When we go low in that, now we're looking for something something to fill us up. Yeah, like, yeah. I need something. So it satiated. plays many roles in, in being able to lose weight and maintaining weight loss. But more importantly, it actually is, is essential in order for uh, many of our nutrient absorption. I like it. So um, as y'all can notice, I put this salmon into the skillet flesh side down. And what I'm gonna do with this is I'm actually, I'm adjusting to make sure we don't have any, doesn't smoke too much. And I'm gonna leave the salmon here and I'm gonna let this cook for maybe three quarters of the way, right? Until it's almost done. And then I'm gonna flip this salmon over, finish it for a couple more minutes, pull it off, let it rest. And then we're gonna let that, we'll have a little bit of carryover cooking. Now I'm doing it this way because I don't like to eat the salmon skin, it's not my favorite part of the salmon, you could totally eat it. Now if you wanted to eat the salmon skin, what you would do is you would do it the complete opposite. You would put the right. salmon skin down first, cook it three quarters of the way, and then when you plated it, you would... Um, Have that beautiful piece of burnt yes, skin on top. Yes, absolutely, right? So it's just the opposite. Um, there's nothing wrong with eating salmon skin, it's totally acceptable. So I'm gonna let that go. I'm um, with you on that. A couple of tricks when you're doing, when you're doing a seared salmon, um, or seared fish for that matter, you want to make sure that you have a really hot pan. Um, that's going to help prevent the sticking. So, was, And that's true for any protein. Um, and then second, what you want to do is you want to make sure that um, once you put that, that, that filet into the pan, leave it alone. Yeah. Don't mess with it. it. Don't, touch Don't it. flip it. Just let it go. Let it sit and let, let the nature of heat do its thing yeah um, and then we're only gonna flip that once and that's especially important like when you get into like a more delicate fish like um, if you were gonna pan sear like the halibut or the, the cod or even snapper right you just want to be you want you don't want to flip it all right so I actually learned how this is like this is a shout out to you Scott Tompkins Scott Tompkins <laughs> taught me how to cook salmon this way because so. that's the only way people would eat it in my family if it was really, oh, really really crispy on top what have you uh what's this whole setup you got here okay, what is guys, all the, so what's all the stuff we are going to make a vinaigrette i love to make my own vinaigrettes i know you like to make your own vinaigrettes do you make salad dressing at home yes you do yes, it's I so it. it's so versatile so i'm going to give you all the basics of a vinaigrette so there's a couple of things you need to know a ratio for any good vinaigrette is going to be Three to one, that's three parts oil to one part acid, so vinegar, lemon juice, something like that, and um, some type of emulsifier, right? So emulsifier could be an egg yolk, it could be garlic, it could be uh, Dijon mustard. So for this recipe, we're actually gonna do some garlic, but our garlic is gonna be our flavoring component, our... Um, Aromatic? Or is aromatic, nice word, chef. We have a question um, about our, the pan you're using for the salmon. Yeah. Does it have to be non-stick? Non-stick is always the best. It doesn't, and it doesn't have to be non-stick. Um, but that's when, like cast iron is beautiful for searing, um, searing fish. But that's where the um, hot, like the hot skillet, like the temperature comes into play, right? So as long as that um, skillet is super hot, like searing hot, right? So, okay. So what we're gonna do is I have a little bit of zest here, and I am going to put this into and what, kind of, what kind of citrus are you using there, Chef? What do you got there? Uh, all of it. All of it. There this recipe go. is called Simple Citrus Vinaigrette. So grapefruit, orange, lemon, yes. lime, any of your favorites. And so I have them all. I have them all. I have some grapefruit. I have navel orange. I have a lime. And I have a lemon. 
because they were so pretty at the store and it all, I just like all the colors. So I went ahead and zested everything and I used a microplane and I know I talk about this all the time, but this is like a serious tool and I use it for like grating garlic, grating cheese, zesting fruit, like this thing does everything. Nutmeg. It's a great popcorn zester. When you're looking for popcorn, you need your cheese. It gives you that little... Right on, chef. I never thought about that. Okay, so in here I've yourself. got my zest. Um, I am going to do a smashed and rough chopped piece of garlic. You like it super garlicky, right? Yep. Are you if a you're talking fan, to me, Marina? yes, I'm a big garlic fan. Gar right. Yeah, it's the basis of pretty much everything I cook. <laughs> I'm like some garlic, but not like all the garlic. All right. All right. Well, I like to mention, you know, if we can go back into Food Synergy, because this is now um, bringing in really um, a, a mechanism that a lot of people don't know about. And so remember at the top of our class today when I mentioned that seafood contains iron? Well, yeah. we know that we can increase the absorption of iron if we include vitamin C with our, our, um, our source of iron. And so just by the wonderful citrus that you're using here, Chef Charlotte, that's bringing in our vitamin C. And now the body will be able to absorb that iron even better. This is very important for folks who may have anemia or um, having trouble keeping their iron levels up. We have a great question about garlic. Does yes. garlic have nutritional benefits? Actually, it does. Um, and it's an allium vegetable, and it has, what, allicin? Is that the... Don't quote me on that. I put you on the spot. <laughs> no, I'm you sorry. Didn't put me, you didn't put me on the spot. No, I, 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 don't know, I don't know the answer, but I do know that it has nutritional values. But, so this is, this is all my classic go-to. If it's grown in the ground, <laughs> it's going to have some sort of nutritional value I love in it. form of a mineral, a vitamin. Um, and so absolutely going to be good for you on top of it being super flavorful. But um, I don't know the specific. Now you have me going to, to go, go to the Google. I got to well, go. I, well, so go what's, Google. what's really I funny about it's Allison. Okay. You're talking about garlic. They talk about uh, so my neighbor is from Tunisia and his mother used to rub garlic on their cuts because it does have it like antimicrobial property. properties. Now, that's to not it, me yeah. giving you medical advice to rub garlic on your cuts, but they always said it had like, he's got very like that kind of, yeah. I, was, I was shocked when I was like, what? It's like all those, so, I'm telling you man, <laughs> food anthropology. So in this little jar, I have some zest of all the citrus. I have some rough chopped garlic. Um, and I have the juice of lemon, lime. And now we're gonna do some of our orange. So talk a little bit about Charlotte. We talk about vinaigrettes there. You're, yes. you're giving the basic, like you talked about the ratio, three to yes. one. Yes, yes. Like, but we also talked earlier about how they can be, mm. you can use your vinaigrette as a multitasker, right? It can be a marinade. It can be yes, different things. Yes, it can like be a and, marinade. And you can use any other acid, right? There's no yes. prescriptive thing, right? Oils right. to use, acids. So the flavor profile that you are looking for is going to dictate what oil and acid you use, right? So olive oil has a distinct flavor and it's a flavor profile that I'm really like, that I'm, I favor. Um, but let's say you wanted to make something that had more of like an Asian um, profile or undertone. This is where like toasted sesame oil and rice wine vinegar would be really nice. Um, if you were doing a basic marinade for, um, maybe like a piece of chicken or something like that, and you wanted something that was very mild, um, perhaps you would do, you would use canola oil, right? Does that make sense? Makes sense to me. Um, I know that you're a big fan of like walnut oil and... I love really funky, expensive oils. Yeah, which it is checks just out. ridiculous, That's but I like, but if we ever walk the aisles of our, we have, at HEB we have all those great olive oils from all over the world. And then we have all those like really cool yeah. nut oils, sunflower oil, wal toasted walnut oil, roasted walnut oil is probably my favorite for like sweeter applications, beet salads, things like that. It's such a phenomenally nutty oil. Okay, so a couple of things. You, you, you like the expense, the, the exotic walnut Champagne oil. Champagne taste, beer budgets. Right, there you go, <laughs> there you go. Okay, so I have actually added, um, so I did the lemon juice and I did the lime juice, but I also added some orange, like navel orange juice to give it a like, just a little bit of sweetness just to give it some balance, right? I threw in that um, Dijon mustard, and our Dijon mustard is gonna be our emulsifier, right? So it's gonna take two things that don't normally go together, which is oil and vinegar, and we are going to, it's gonna suspend them together, right? Okay, 
Now we're going to add in our oil. Now, so you're going to use olive oil. I'm going to use olive oil, and I'm going to do a, we're doing a three to one ratio, so I have about what, like a, a third of a cup? quarter yeah, of a cup. Sure, I yeah. didn't measure and I'm so sorry. <laughs> but that's but okay. I'm that's... going to do it visually. So I'm going to add in some oil. Now you could do this in a, um, a blender. You could do this in a, um, a food processor or you could just, you could whisk it in a bowl. But I'm, I'm going to use the good old. I like the rustic. Rustic has its appeal. And I think shaking the power. heck out of something in a jar is like, Ooh. you know, gives it a little more. I'm really excited about this. Y'all. Okay. I'm going to shake it. I think mason jars are probably one of my favorite kitchen tools so to use. So versatile, in right? You could use ways. like a you could use like a Rubbermaid resealable. Oh, we did all those wonderful food containers. Okay, now I'm just gonna shake this guy up. Shake it. I think we Should need to I see dance? you shake your shake it more. You need to emulsify more than that. Like a, a like more. a Polaroid picture. No, <laughs> no, not like a Polaroid. You're gonna embarrass <laughs> me in front of all of my friends. <laughs> all right, I'm shaking this guy up. Look at that. Okay. So to give you guys an idea, I don't know if y'all can see this, um, but the power of TV, I'm going to do, I'm gonna get a spoon so you can see like the consistency, right? And so basically, see how it coats the back of that spoon? We have a really good suspension right there. And you can keep this in your refrigerator for like five to seven days. Um, and then before you use it, just shake it up. This is gonna be so, Oh, that was like, you took like, that was literally what, 10 seconds of shaking? Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Um, also, I, d I need to taste this. I need to taste this because I want to see how it's going to be on. I think the, the, the homemade Ooh. minigrettes, Ooh. like the way you just did, yeah. is something that once you do it once, you're like, why haven't I been doing this forever? Why it's haven't I been so doing delicious. this forever? Okay. Lucinda has, a great, Lucinda has a question for you, Charlotte. Yes. Are we supposed to flip the salmon? I think she's getting nervous about the salmon. <laughs> yes. I think she thinks you forgot yes, about the salmon. Yes, I'm glad that somebody was paying attention <laughs> to my salmon. Lucinda, was that your name? We're going to flip the salmon right now, and I'm going to use my fish spat. I love this thing. This thing is designed to gently and delicately flip fish. I absolutely love it. Tompkins likes, are y'all ready? I'm so excited about this, guys. Okay, Tompkins loves this for pancakes. It's the pancake spatula. Woo! Look how pretty that is. Okay, I'm sorry, I got so really Lucinda, excited. You see, so Lucinda okay. was nervous about, we need to flip the salmon. So we are, like you said earlier, we are cooking it for about three quarters of the way yes. on one side. So when you're finishing it, it's just at literally two to three more minutes just to bring up the temp, but that's it. That's all you got to do. I'm and actually going to shut this guy off and I'm going to set it up over here. And I'm going to let that do a little bit of carryover. I know that you prefer your salmon to be more on the rare side, right, Chef? Yes. Okay. Still swimming. I'm, Still I'm swimming. like a. Not quite sushi, but you know, I like it. Okay. Okay. All right. Let me check on our cod and see how. It smells well, good. Well, life happened. But don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry, it's still beautiful. Oh, We're gonna take amazing. this guy out. Crispy. And I'm gonna set him right back over here. All right, okay, so everything is coming together beautifully. So I'm gonna do a quick cleanup. So you've got plating. your dressing, you've got the salmon resting, the cod yep. is being, it's now resting. So everything, the great thing about this class, the great thing about fish is, if you go back and rewatch this, everything is done so quickly because you are talking about fish. There's yep. no, we don't have all that, it's, yes. it's not a huge piece of bone in fish, it's just these really delicate, yep. you know, pieces of fish. Okay. Quickly, while everything is resting, I'm gonna take another skillet and I'm actually gonna make our side to our cod. And I'm actually gonna use this like garlic pesto skillet um, saute. This is all the vegetables you'll ever need in one container right here. This is the garlic pesto. Um, so where, where also do you, where, I can't get where, into Walk us it. through this, where'd you find it? So I found this in the produce. Oh, I did it, okay, success. And Basically, this is done in 15 minutes. Everything is in there and it has this wonderful like, like flavoring component and you just pour that on top. This is gonna pair beautifully. The directions are in here. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. I'm yeah, they're all cut. You talk, we talk about meal planning in the last yep. class. So I Chef, did. I'm gonna ask you, so if we were gonna try to turn this into another meal, yep. you've got salmon, you've got the cod, we've got these great vegetables. Could you uh, use, save the sauce that's in the vegetables and just sure. use your vinaigrette over the salmon and the vegetables? Could you do that like as a multi, multi-use kind Why of thing? Why couldn't you? I think oh, that's a brilliant I'm just, idea. Just here to ask questions. I don't I know. I love I'm it. Just, I'm just... Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, look. Lenana, we're eating the rainbow. This eating the rainbow and you didn't do any work for you open the package. <laughs> And it's that simple. I, you know, when we talk about creating a sustainable 
um, lifestyle changes, part of what you need to figure out is where do I need to be putting my, uh, you know, extra, just a couple of extra cents so that I save time, but I still get the nutrition I need. And these guys do it for you. It, right? You know, yeah. Didn't we say like, okay, so sometimes vegetables go to my house to die. I feel really bad for them um, because I buy it. I'm like, they look so pretty at the store. Anyway, some of them go. So what I do you have there? What do you, what do you have? Oh, okay. So I'm glad you asked. So in my bowl, I have the Southwest chopped salad base. So it's very much like the Southwest um, chopped salad kit, only um, there's no like accoutrement, right? So there's no vinaigrette, there's no like add-in. So basically you get, it's your canvas, right? I love it. Um, let's saute these guys, just like that. And that's a pretty quick saute on those vegetables, right? They're it's like chopped, five minutes, so right? So I'm gonna add fast. in some um, cherry tomatoes, and then I did myself a solid because I really like Parmesan cheese and I just kind of chip some up and, you know, Parmesan is the king yeah, of Yeah, look cheese. at those chunks, man. That's like, right? yeah, that's a meal. All right. I'm going to saute this again. I like it. We, you oh, guys, my God. I, Everything is coming together beautifully. I heard you guys both talk about eating the rainbow. Will you explain, like, what, what that means? As far, I know that that has to do with kind of ties in food synergy, I'm sure. We yeah, kind of so talk about the... Absolutely. Yeah, th that is one of my favorite things to say too, is to eat the rainbow because the reality is the different colors within all your fruits and vegetables, those are those antioxidants coming through. So I love to always speak about uh, vitamin A, lycopene. Those are the, the, the guys, those are the good guys that you really want to make sure you're consuming on a daily basis, y'all. Every single day, we need to make sure we are receiving minerals, vitamins from fruits and vegetables. And so the different colors in the different vegetables are really just noting different types of minerals, vitamins coming through. Um, so that's just another one of those um, amazing things that, that we don't think about. Um, doesn't mean like if you're a lover of all green vegetables, um, okay, great, as long as you're getting something. But when you can pull in those red, yellows, oranges, now you're pulling in that lycopene um, and other, you know, your vitamin C's, vitamin Love A's, it. all these yeah. wonderful things. Okay. I'm going to do a little drizzle of this really quickly. Now, did you season, did you season the vinaigrette with salt and pepper? I'm sorry. I'm, I did. I'm, I missed that. That's I one did. of my biggest steps. I did. I did. <laughs> I did. You were uh, Lorena, please tell me attention. what the normal amount of salt you're supposed to, a normal human would have to intake on a normal day. Let's what you should be having in a normal day? Yeah, salt-wise. Yeah, now if you are a healthy individual, no underlying health conditions, um, you could have up to 2,100 milligrams of sodium a day. It starts to go down whenever Ooh. you uh, maybe are we experiencing high blood pressure, any cardiovascular issues, then your physician might say to go a lot lower than that. Um, but we tend to get way too much sodium. But I mean, all the wonderful ingredients that Chef Charlotte's using right now, that's the flavor we want coming through. Um, which will help you keep your sodium intake down. Fresh citrus. So really quickly, I wanted to show everyone, if you didn't, if you wanted to remove that skin really easily, like look how easily the skin pulls away from this the piece of salmon. The magic of that spatula, that. get out of town. Totally beautiful. Spatula is like my favorite thing in the whole wide world. So super easy, right? And then you don't even have to mess with it. You don't even have to, it's like. Can I tell you thing. one of my favorite things in the whole wide world? Please. So you just put down a really, really crispy piece of salmon on top of like some greens with some dressing. Like that's probably like my, my favorite meal to eat, like crispy salmon, like just, but I probably would drown it, full disclosure, and a little more dressing, a little more salt I pepper. was trying to be, like, I was trying to be but I um, no, used like, sparingly because, um, it's a perfect you know, meal. we have a guest here. Perfect uh, okay, meal. so now we're gonna plate up this cod. I've got these vegetables, they're perfect. They're al dente or not, you know, to the, to the, tooth. To the tooth, if you will, chef. And I'm gonna just put these in the bottom. This like feels like super like kind of like pasta primavera, like total restaurant style with all that good garlic and everything. These vegetables. And are it beautiful. all came in a container that you right? bought at H E B that has everything. And now already. I'm gonna get my fish spat. Okay, don't worry. Sometimes things cook, and this is what we call rustic. All right, it's it's rustic. Some crumbs so, fell off. You're referring to? It's chef? totally sure. okay. I all right, I'm all right. For days, it's gonna right? Be okay, so I'm just gonna use my fish spat. Cause you're gonna show us what to do with those extra stuff that came uh, off yeah. rustic, right? Ooh, I got a feeling. Ooh. I'm just gonna plate Dang, this. Dang, look at that. It's gonna fall apart just a little bit, and that's okay. And then I'm gonna get some gloves. I really want to use my hands. And then look at this. 
smells really, really good. I'm just going to take some of these extra crumbs like this, and I'm just going to give them on the top like that. It's texture. You know, Ooh. you got to have, you have soft vegetables, you have soft flaky fish, that cracker crumb on top. Oh you got to have some so textures. Pretty. You got to have. Oh, wait a second, y'all. I know we have this. <laughs> do a little you're absolutely right chef scott when it comes to textures in a meal that's so important in the way that we are accepting that meal and it, it actually makes you remember it more um, when you've got all of these varying um, textures in there too y'all i got this knife at h-e-b today what is this they're all very sharp so <laughs> sharp hampton forge so sharp okay oh my gosh look at this guys look how pretty this looks is that a meyer that's a meyer lemon right? it is a meyer lemon i like look meyer lemons that. Oh, look, a little lemon. Look at that. Ah, I'm in Two love. Two fish dishes. I'm in love. I'm in love. Two fish dishes in like one hour. Less than. Way less, less than. than. Yo, I feel like I just ran a marathon. So, meal. Um, <laughs> so, talks to meal prepping. So, okay. Uh, for, go ahead, Chef. No. No. I was going to say, the for those of you who have been uh, following the series, you can always go back. Uh, Chef Charlotte and I will be happy to uh, sous chef, be your sous chef in your kitchen as you go back and watch any of these great uh, classes um, from our past that we've done uh, that we can, you can pause and relook and re-see and relearn. Uh, we'll be happy to, to do it right along with you in the video, of course. Um, but these are, these are all great. This will be available very soon after, again, on our YouTube channel. Is it good? So good. But they're really, really good. That's the, that's the thing is like, I think, especially in 2021, you know, where it's a new year, it's a new you. There's all this great resolution solutions stuff going on at HEB. There's all this, there's citrus, there's all these great things, but we want to really, and I know Jeff, that you do such a great job at this. So we really want to show you and show people how to like, just how to do food better. Every, yeah. every, every time we want to show you these great techniques, these great things, just show you like, it doesn't have to be fussy or overly dramatic. It can, it's so simple just the pairing and then the, obviously Lorena with talking about like the, the health with, with things and how to cut down on stuff and what great fats to use and why you should be eating fish. It's all good stuff. You guys are amazing. Why thank you. We want to thank our HB chefs for inspiring us in that way. And if y'all don't mind, speak a little bit more about what we can do as a dietitian team also um, for, for our customers. If you didn't know, uh, meeting with a dietitian in store, not only are you going to be meeting with them and getting a consultation, but we also have meal planning available. That's really important because it's specific to your dislikes, your likes, yeah. your needs. So we've got a meal plan that our dietitians can provide to you. We also have some great options for diagnostic testing. By that, I mean metabolic testing. We've got an in-body machine. Um, and also now this really great nutrient uh, deficiency testing as well. So, so what is an in-body machine? Sorry, in -body I, this is now my own personal. <laughs> yeah, an in-body machine is gonna not only, of course, tell you your weight, but it gives you a breakdown of your body fat percentage. Okay. It tells you uh, really uh, lots of great information on how um, also you are hydrated. So the water okay. in your body. Um, and so this is great for somebody who perhaps has been working for weight loss on a, for a long time yeah. and just not seeing results. We can take a look at it from uh, different parts of your body perspective. You know, what do your legs look like in, in muscle mass? What do your arms look like in muscle mass? Um, are you properly hydrated? Um, and so it tells us really great information. Fantastic. Okay. I love it. So really quickly, since I have this piece of salmon over here and we were talking about um, meal prepping and doing that sort of stuff and setting yourself up for success, let's just say that you had, you made all the salmon, you had a little bit left over. You can flake this salmon once it's cool enough to touch into the salad and put, let it cool and put it into um, a like reusable container. Um, I think we have all those beautiful K&T ones, right? And then um, this is a beautiful lunch to eat the following day, ice cold. You can reheat salmon. I wouldn't like, I wouldn't do that to your coworkers, but if you're like working from home, also I wouldn't do that to your coworkers. It's like microwaving, <laughs> microwaving octopus. Right, um, but look how beautiful that looks. And then this would look exceptionally wonderful inside one of those, um, you know, containers. I mean, it's so good. And one of those great K&T containers if you watched the last I class. I I'm so excited about it. Those are great. Um, it, just in case you missed any of these recipes or you misplaced them for any reason, you can always find them at hb.com.
Um, we did the baked cod with crispy cracker crumbs. We did a salt and pepper seared salmon and then the super simple vinaigrette. Um, you can also revisit these classes at heb.com slash classes and also see what any of the classes um, are lined up for the future. Future classes, um, that's right. Again, I want to thank um, LaDana Kaplan for coming by. Um, super excited. I always learn something new that you guys do um, as far as like nutrition services and that's super exciting. And then of course, Scott Tompkins, as always, your colorful commentary. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, Happy Stick to be Stick around for a couple more minutes for folks. any questions. I'm going to shout out to our camera crew. Who are also awesome. Also, um, and nobody asked me what my resolution was for 2021. Finger guns. So I'm what bringing is it with finger the, guns. Why, why the finger gun? Because why not? Uh, it's 2021 and anything can happen. Back. So right. thank you guys so much. I appreciate your time. I'm going to bring back the clapper. I'm going to bring back the clapper in 2021.